Hello beautiful people and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be doing a very long awaited video that I have been procrastinating to the highest level on. First I just didn't want to do it and then I got my hair cut and my layers are really short and so my hair wasn't cooperating the way that I wanted it to so I wanted it to grow out a little bit longer before I made this video because this is the kind of video that like you go back to over and over as long as your routine doesn't change so I wanted it to be a good video. So I wanted to wait for my hair to grow out a little bit more and I'm in a much better place with the length of my hair now. So I even procrastinated today. I almost didn't film this. And then I said, Hannah, you just start talking. Just start talking to the camera and you just get it done. I've also been super stressed, but also incredibly grateful. Um, but also just both for sure, stressed and grateful um, because I started working as a hairstylist. So just took up a lot of my mind space, you know? Oh, the other reason I was pushing back this video is because some of the products I've been using like religiously were sold out and I wanted to be able to have them to show you like what products I've been using the most and everything. So before we get into the video, if you like curly hair content and you need help with your curly hair, you need tips, you just like watching my videos, I post a lot on my Instagram. I will put it right here. So yeah, be sure to go over there and follow pretty consistent over there. Without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start off by talking about two product combinations that I've been like obsessing over. So the first is one that I was using for months and months and it became like my holy grail combo. And the other one is one that I've been using the past like month that I haven't been able to stop using. And I think I'm probably going to use that one today as well and show you. But I wanted to show you both of them because they're both amazing. They're good for different things. So I wanted to show you both options. So the first combo that I have been obsessed with for months and months, and I declare it is probably my holy grail combo, is Mish Set Gel to Foam Styling Mousse with the Mish Sculpt Curl Defining Gel and the Bounce Curl Hairspray on top. It is something special. I almost want to use it today, but I won't. I'll refrain, but oh my God. every time I use this combo, my hair turns out amazing. I did a whole video on the Mish products I tried and you guys know I fell in love with them and I was not lying because I'm still using them religiously to this day. I'll link my Mish video below for you guys if you want to see those products in action. Um, but like I said in that video, these products clump your hair together like there is no tomorrow, but they're so lightweight that you still get good volume. But recently I've been liking to go for like smaller clumps and so that's why I've been going for this other combo a little bit more. My second combo has been the AG Hair Care Curl Trigger. This is a sea salt kind of spray. It's like a curl activating spray, but it's not actually a sea salt spray. So it's not going to give your hair like that like really gunked up feeling that sea salt sprays will give you. I used this on its own last night. Like I washed my hair and I didn't style it. I just sprayed this in and scrunched it and let it air dry. And I will put up on the screen what it looks like. I was so shocked. This product, you guys, I've been obsessed. I use it to refresh my hair pretty much exclusively right now. This with steam to refresh your hair. Oh. Um, it really just makes your curls just curl right back up. It It is definitely a curl trigger defining spray. I think that's a good name for it. It's a curl activator essentially and I love it. it adds texture to your hair. Next, I use the AG Hair Care Mousse Gel. This gives your hair such great texture and volume and just like that effortless look. Um, I tried it on its own and it's not bad at all, but I definitely like a little bit more hold, but for a mousse, amazing hold. But this is definitely a mousse. It's not a foam. I feel like it gives your hair a little bit more texture. It doesn't clump the hair as much because a foam is much more water content than a mousse is. It's not going to clump your hair as much. And so I've been liking that for when I want smaller clumps and just big volume, that effortless look. So that's what I've been going for this with and it makes your hair last so well. It's the highest hold mousse I've ever used for sure. It can make your hair feel a little bit like dry, but that's just because of the texture. It's not actually drying your hair out, but if you don't like that texturized feeling, I wouldn't use this, but I love that feeling. The Mish foam does not give you that feeling. So if you want your hair to feel like softer, definitely go with the Mish one, but I've been obsessed with the texture this one gives. Do you know when you like look at a product and you know you're going to love it? It's exactly how I felt when this product came out. On top of that, I put my favorite gel, the We Dad Heat and Humidity Stronghold Gel. It's hard for me to pick one gel, but like I always go back to this one. So I kind of feel like I have to say that it's my Holy Grail gel, honestly. So this never fails me. So this combo, definitely very texturized and volumized. Also, sometimes I will replace the We Dad um, gel with the Bounce Curl Hairspray. And I will normally 
use an aerosol hairspray once I'm done. If I feel like my roots are a little flat, I'll just spray this. And the roots, this is the Redken brushable hairspray. But there's lots of, the Tresemme one is great as well if you want a more affordable option. But yeah, this one just smells really nice. I don't want to ramble too long about the products. I just thought that this is important as well. Because while products aren't the only thing that matters, they do matter. I also haven't had the chance to tell you guys about my favorite product combos recently. And I thought this would be a good video to throw those in. So, as you notice, I like foams, mousses, and gels as my combos pretty much. I rarely use leave-ins and creams. There are some that I love, and if my, I feel like my hair needs it, I will throw it in. Um, my favorite affordable cream is absolutely the Not Your Mother's Curl Top Cream. It is so good. Yeah, so, and, and depending, like the Miche Leave-In Spray, I love to use if my hair's feeling a little dry. It just depends on how my hair's feeling. But most of the time, with my fine medium hair, and I love volume, I pretty much stick to mousse shell hairspray kind of products and then like texture sprays or volumizing lotions. Let's get into the styling. I have to wet my hair and we'll get right into it. I guess I should show you the sectioning first. So um, I have an old video of my old routine that I did a couple years ago and I think that's still a great video especially if you're someone who doesn't like brush styling I would go watch that video. This video is very brush style heavy. I used to do three sections and I've really been loving just doing two. So what I do is I take from right here and I just go straight back like that. Almost like you're doing a half up, half down. That's how I section. Now I'm gonna wet this hair. <laughs> so the level of water that you put in your hair is really important when it comes to the end result. So if you're wanting like lots of definition, big clumps, um, less frizz, you're gonna wanna soak your hair down and you're gonna want it to sound like that. This isn't even all the way super soaking. I have it pretty much in between damp and soaking. If you want that super defined, super clumped up, no frizz look, you're gonna want sopping wet hair. And obviously when you have sopping wet hair product on, they're gonna be a little bit diluted. So my trick with that is to brush style or define your hair by raking, scrunching, whatever you're gonna do while your hair's sopping wet. Then take a t-shirt, scrunch the excess water out and add a little bit more product on top because so that it's not as diluted, but you still have those clumps and it was still styled while it was soaking wet. So that's a tip if you like soaking, styling on soaking wet hair but you're having problems with not getting good enough hold. If you have damper hair, it's gonna give you more volume. Your hair is not gonna clump as much and it is usually associated with a little bit more frizz but frizz also equals volume. The right kind of frizz is actually a little bit good. If you're wanting volume, just depends on what look you're going for. And with the curl trigger, then immediately after, we're going in with the mousse gel. As you can see, like I said, this is a true mousse. This isn't a foam. And I always apply my products by raking. Because I feel like you just get more even distribution. You're just inserting your fingers and raking through. And as you can see, you're going to be able to get root to tip distribution of the products. A lot of people like to just scrunch all their product in and look what happens when I scrunch. I'm focusing mainly on the ends and all of these in-between pieces that get crumpled up aren't going to have any product applied to them. Definitely recommend for products that are more lightweight like a mousse that you want to be through your roots to ends that you rake them through. And make sure you don't forget this bottom section here. I feel like we all kind of forget that area and that's the area that rubs against your clothes all day and it has friction on it so you want to make sure it has good hold because that's where frizz will show up so we have the mousse distributed through the hair so if you're wanting more definition if you're wanting more frizz control less volume you're now going to apply your gel and then brush style or your hairspray whichever you're going to use and what that does is brush styling really helps to distribute products throughout the hair so if you're applying gel and it's being brushed through you're going to have more coverage meaning less frizz more definition but less volume as well or what i typically do is i brush style and then i scrunch in my gel and glaze a little bit so i'll show you what i do but if you want more definition flip flop apply your gel now then brush style but i'm going to brush style then apply my gel so i've been super high maintenance recently um which actually doesn't take me any longer necessarily so i will alternate between this guy and then this guy which i'll show you what that means okay hello everyone this is future hannah here i wanted to come in and give a better explanation because i feel like past hannah did not do a very good job of explaining why i was using separate brushes and just clumps in general so i just want to do it really quick and concise right here and then i'll just cut out everything i ever said about clumps and brushes 
So essentially, I've been using two different brushes to brush style, and for me, um, the reason that I do that is because I feel like when you use the same brush on your entire head, you're influencing the curls to look the exact same all over the entire head, and that's fine. The only problem with that is then I feel like my curls clump together so much more easily because they're all pretty much you're influencing them all the same way if you're using the same brush on all of them. It's like if you're using a curling iron and you do all of them in the exact same direction, they're all turning this way, they're all gonna kind of like grab onto each other. So that's pretty much the only reason I've been using separate brushes because I feel like it just, I've been having a lot of problems with my curls clumping up and so I've just been trying to do anything I can to prevent that from happening. I don't think there's anything wrong with using just one brush. I'm just incredibly extra. <laughs> um, another principle of clumping. I need to just do an entire video on clumping, how to get your curls clumped. This entire video, if you guys would like that, it's actually a lot more in depth than you would think. Basic principle of clumping that I think is essential for this video is if you take a bigger section and you brush style it, you're gonna get bigger clumps. If you take a smaller section and you brush style it, you're gonna get smaller clumps. So even if you did wanna just use one brush and you wanted smaller clumps, just take smaller sections or you can take a big section with a brush like the Bounce Curl Define brush that I have already showed or will show in this video that has, let me grab it. As you can see, it has, it has the comb on the side so it'll automatically separate your curls. But even still, if you wanted smaller clumps, after you do a giant section, just go in with a wide tooth comb and separate it a little bit more. So if you're in a hurry and you want smaller clumps, you can take bigger sections, but just make sure that using a brush like this or you're separating with a wide tooth comb, or even if you are using this one and you want smaller clumps, you can still go in with that comb as well. If they made this brush with smaller indentations, I would flip out. The principle of it is bigger sections, you're gonna get bigger, clump bigger clumps, smaller sections, you're gonna get smaller ones, but here's the thing. Some people's curl tag, you can only go so small with your clumps because I would love to have even smaller clumps than I currently do when I style, but the problem is that a singular piece of hair that is, let's say, wavy curly, you can pretty much barely tell that it's actually wavy curly on its own. You put more of those strands together, you then start to see the pattern. So if you have a looser texture and your clumps are too small, you're not really gonna be able to see that they're actually curls. They might just look a little bit stringy. And vice versa, if you have very, very curly, coily hair, um, you do clumps that are too big, it'll look almost unnatural. Um, so yeah, there's a spectrum of how big or how small you can go depending on your hair texture and what you prefer. So again, just keep that in mind also. And a rule of thumb, if you're using a bristle brush, like the Bounce Curl one or like the Stenman here, um, it's going to create bigger clumps just by the nature of these brushes. They have a lot of bristles and so they're really grabbing onto the hair. The tension is really high with these kind of brushes and they will clump your hair bigger so when i use these kind of brushes i take smaller sections if i want volume if you want definition it's fine but when i'm using bristle brushes i take smaller sections and when i'm using a brush like a denman i will put on the screen an example of the difference the clumpage is with a bristle versus this and i'm using this one in that video if you're using this the clumps would be even bigger because this already separates them on its own but you can still tell the difference between this and then. These ones separate the curls a lot more. So for my hair texture, I will take slightly bigger sections with this one because if I take too small sections, the clumps will be too small and it'll just look stringy. So if you're using a bristle brush, just be aware that these can make very clumpy curls. So if you want that, that's great. Make big sections, regular size sections. If you don't, make smaller sections. With a brush like this, or just if you're just using your detangling brush, you might want to take maybe slightly bigger sections with this kind of brush. Um, again, depending on your hair texture. If you have a super, super tight hair texture, you can use this with smaller sections and it'll give you great volume and it'll look amazing. Um, so yeah, just really depends on your hair texture. So I just wanted to make that like really concise and easy for you to understand right here in the beginning because I was sprinkling this in throughout the whole video and I just feel like it was kind of confusing. So that's that on that. I hope you enjoy the video. And then anytime I brush coil at all, um, I use this one, my tried and true, my first love brush. Um, and I also use it, so I have, I know a lot of people struggle with this, like hair around the ear being like way wavier than the rest of your hair. We all have problem areas on our hair, I feel like, where they're just a little bit looser. So for me, every single time, it's right here and right here. <laughs> So I brush style with this guy just for those areas and then if I brush coil. I usually just take the entire section before my ears and I either go like that, so insert the brush, angle it, 
pinch the root and pull or I will take this entire section which this is a big section to brush coil and I will and I will brush coil it and then I will separate this out once the hair is dry but this section just needs a little bit more love so this isn't something that you guys have to do um, but if there but if you do have a problem area just showing you what I do yeah let me show you that again in slow motion so slow motion brush coiling insert the brush and angle it down so that the hair starts positioning towards the handle of the brush roll it up and then just untwist and that's it oh my rule of thumb is when i'm using this brush i'm taking small sections and when i'm using this brush i take a little bit bigger sections i just take horizontal sections as i go and you just feel it out For this first section i'm going to use the bounce curl define brush insert angle come out a little bit and shake shake and then Really. Since we just used the bounce curl brush, now going in with my Denman, I do the exact same thing. So once I get to this back section, I now take sections that way. Taking my bounce curl brush again, because we just used the Denman, and I'm brushing upwards and forwards for more volume. Notice I keep wetting it down. Be aware of how your hair is feeling. It shouldn't feel dry whatsoever. It should feel very slippy. That's what you want your hair to feel like when you're brush styling. This is all we have left and I'm just gonna do this as one section. So this is the section that's gonna lay right here. I'm gonna take our gel. I'm gonna brush the gel through this one just for a little bit of extra help. It's like I said, there's friction on this guy. How amazing is this brush, you guys? It literally kills me. So now this side of my head is done. And what I like to do is I just look and anything that looks a little bit stringy, I'll grab it. I'll grab one or two sections and I will brush coil. This is just if I'm feeling extra. But yeah, I usually just do like one or two. Any area that looks a little stringy, I'll just add this guy in. Now is when I will scrunch and glaze my gel over. So I put it in my hand and then as you see, just glazing and then scrunching. Make sure you're scrunching all the way to the root and you're doing it very firm but gently. You're not just throwing your hair around everywhere. And that's that for this side. So now I'm going to do this side off camera and I will be back. So this side is done and basically um, you just want to get to know your hair really. I wanted to make that point. So like the only reason I know that these areas are problem areas and I use a specific brush for those areas and a specific technique is because I know my hair. So just pay attention to your hair um, and you'll learn, you'll start to learn those things. And once you implement techniques, they're gonna help you once you know your hair. Your hair becomes so much more consistent in its results. So just keep trying, keep styling your hair until you start to learn what your hair likes, what works for you, what look you even like to go for. So now that both sides are done, I'm gonna throw them to the back. Now I'm gonna take this section of hair down and I'm going to put it just right in my face. Make sure this is really wet okay so i apply all my products <laughs> let me lift this up i apply all my products with my hair directly in front of my face when it comes to the top section which is using those same products again going in with the curl trigger then the mousse again we're still raking doing the same exact thing basically the way that i brush style this i take from here we're just trying to cut down this giant section, but we want to do it in a way where there's going to be no part. So I can flip my hair however I want to. I can have it in the middle, I can have it on either side, and there's just going to be a lot of volume on the top. So as you can see, I cut it. We're, we're basically trying to make this square section into a triangular section, and I'll show you. So just cut the side out like that. 
And sometimes I like to add a little bit of extra product through each section when I'm doing the top because it's hard to sort of get even distribution when I'm going like this. So now we're just brush styling like normal and throwing it back. And now we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So just making another little triangular piece right in the back again. That same brush on either side and then we switch. Now that we have those two triangular sections, now take one horizontal to meet the two together. And I'm gonna switch brushes for right here and just insert the brush, angle it up, and then let it fall back. Now we're repeating that process one more time. So again, another angle back, like so. And you can start to see this is starting to look like a, more of a triangle now. And now we're switching to the Denman brush. I am doing this purely through muscle memory because I cannot use a mirror like I normally do. So hopefully you guys are able to see what I'm talking about. So again, from right here straight back, making that triangular cut. Grab the Denman again and style. So now that we have this triangular section, we can now just take horizontal sections all the way down to the front. Going with the bounce curl here and again, brushing straight up and then just sort of bouncing a little and then letting it fall straight back. A little bit bigger of a section because we're going in with the Denman. falling all over the place because I can't see what I'm doing. So last section, taking my bounce curl brush, angling it, bouncing as I go. Also if you want extra definition here, you can hold the brush up and as you can see, you just take each section and roll it. The brush tells you exactly where to do it. So if that's something you want, for extra definition in the front, you can definitely do that, but you do not have to. So now we are going to glaze and scrunch in our gel. And make sure you do that on both sides. So now I'm flipping my hair to the other side, adding, getting a little more gel, glaze over, and then scrunch. Now I'm gonna micro plop. So I'm gonna take an old t-shirt. I'm doing this with all of my hair. Um, I always do this before I diffuse because it just cuts down your diffusing time. It gets rid of a lot of that excess water. Also helps with volume because you're getting rid of excess weight. So while you're drying, the hair isn't being dragged down as much. So you'll have more shrinkage. So no matter what, I always at this point put hairspray right here in the roots just to give them height. They don't start slanting and falling down while I'm drying. I like to hairspray the roots always, even if I'm not using hairspray anywhere else. After I micro plop though, I do like to add in a little bit more hold product for the exact reason I said earlier, um, because I won't be as diluted on the hair. So I'm just adding some hairspray into my hand. And I'm gonna scrunch that in now that there's less water in the hair. And as you're sitting here scrunching, before you start diffusing, just look around and if you see any wonky looking curls, fix them now before your hair is dry because once your hair is dry, the only way you're gonna be able to fix it is if you wet your hair again, and it's just so much more of a pain. So before you start diffusing and while you are diffusing, just make sure you're watching your hair, and if you see any wonky curls, stop right there and wet it down a little bit more and just finger roll it, scrunch it, do whatever you need to do, like I just did. Fix it before your hair is dry. <laughs> I'm gonna diffuse my hair, and then I will be back and I will show you guys the finished result. If you want to know how I diffuse my hair, I have a video on how I diffuse my hair, and it's pretty much the exact same as what I do now. So, but make sure whether you're air drying or you're diffusing, you want volume at the roots, and you want to be able to flip your hair both ways, um, make sure you're flipping your hair like this. Don't put your hand in there. Try not to touch your hair too much right now until it's dry. It has to set first. You're going to end up with stringiness and frizziness. So just flip your hair like this every like five, ten minutes. If you're air drying, if you're diffusing, like every couple minutes, flip sides so that 
it dries both ways and you have more movement in your roots as well. So, okay, I'm gonna go dry my hair and I'll be right back. Okay, and here are the final results. This is with my hair done the middle, my hair to this side, and my hair to this side. So as you can see, I can flip my hair however I want because of how I style the top, which is my preferred way of doing it. Also, I have lots of volume, but still nice definition. My hair is not too frizzy, but it has enough frizz that it's able to be big and poofy. There's clumps, but the clumps aren't so big that I'm losing volume and movement in my hair. that's everything about my current hair routine I'm sure eventually it will change it always does but this is what I'm really into right now and this is what has been working for me I hope this video was helpful for you guys if this seems too complicated I promise you just give it a try and if it, you still feel like it's a little bit too much for you go back to my first video I feel like it was a lot more beginner friendly because I was more of a beginner back then when I filmed that video I feel like it might be a little bit easier to follow but anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, comment down below a... What emoji should we put? Oh no. Is there a hairbrush emoji? Because if there is, we're gonna do that. Okay, there is a paintbrush emoji. So, we'll just, we'll do that one. <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video, comment down below a paintbrush emoji so that I know you made it all the way to the end. If you did, thank you so, so much. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I love you so, so much, and I hope to see you in my next one.